Wait, cut, cut, cut. This is Broke Film School. Hey everybody, I'm Matt, and this is the pilot episode of Broke Film School, the My Crazy Productions series that shows you how to make films on a ramen noodle budget. All right, some quick background on me before we start this episode. I manage my community college's TV studio, and one question I'm always asked is, which camera is the best one out? And that's a really hard question to answer, because it really depends on a bunch of different factors. Are you gonna need 4K? Are you gonna be shooting in low light? Is slow motion a necessity? But one thing I always try to stress, and is really the most important thing to me, is what lens are you gonna be using? Then I pondered to myself, when buying your first camera, how much should you really spend on the lens? So I conducted an experiment. I asked my coworker Alex Haynes if he would sit in and allow me to shoot him with a variety of cameras and lenses ranging from consumer to professional. The cameras we decided to use for this experiment were the Canon T5 for a consumer camera and a Canon C100 for a professional camera. As for our lenses, I decided to use the Canon 18-55mm stock zoom lens and the Canon 50mm f1.8 prime lens for our consumer lenses. And for our professional lenses, I decided to use the Canon L-series 24-105mm to for the zoom and then the Rokinon 35mm cine lens. So now I'm going to show you guys the test footage with our panel's blind commentary. Now I try to make all the footage look as close as possible. So if you need to, pause, take notes, figure out which one you like the most. <sighs> and after this long-winded explanation, we can finally figure out what comes first, the camera or the lens. go down from top to bottom, I think D, B, A, and C. Um, and it's a, it's a close, it's definitely close between B and D. Um, again, if the, if the exposure value, or ex if the exposure was a little higher on zoom B, I feel like it would definitely, it could definitely match up against D in any, any in ideal lighting conditions. Uh, it's a little tough, but uh, I think B, uh, Zoom B is uh, my favorite. Uh, I'm not too sure if that was because the uh, that it's because it's darker and it's more properly exposed than uh, than A and C and uh, even D a little bit. But uh, I think uh, I think just the uh, the way the uh, the tie the details in the tie is really like uh, exploited or not exploited um, really show in that one and. Uh, Zoom D, I think is second. Uh, Zoom D again with the tie, and uh, you actually get like a, a good amount of facial, uh, like uh, you see more of his pores in, uh, in, Zoom, in Zoom D than you do with A and C. Um, for A and C, I'm going to put them both at the bottom uh, as three. I can't really decide which one I think is not as good. Okay, so uh, Zoom D is definitely my favorite. Then I'm gonna have to go with Zoom B, and then Zoom A, and then lastly Zoom C. Starting with the top, I'll, yeah. I'll go with uh, Prime D, then Prime A, Prime C, then Prime B. First place you have D, second place you have A, third place you have C, and fourth place you have B. Uh, prime A definitely. It has uh, some pretty good bokeh. Really separates him from the background. Good depth of field. Um, 
he's sharp but not too sharp. The light um, coming in through the lens isn't that bad. It's actually, it allows a good amount of light. Prime, uh, ooh, next would probably be Prime D. Um, I like the sharpness of it, it's really good quality. Again, separates him from the background really well. Um, I would say it's just like a little bit too sharp. Like it makes him look kind of almost fake. Uh, then I'd have to say Prime B. Although it's not as sharp as the other ones, it still separates him from the background pretty well. Um, it's just not as sharp and the light that comes in is pretty nice. But then Prime C, um, there's too much light. He's not as sharp as the other ones. Still good separation from the background, um, but the quality just doesn't look up to par with the others. All right, now here are the results. Zoom A was the Canon T5 with the L series 24 to 105 lens. Zoom B was the Canon C100 with the stock 18 to 55 lens. Zoom C was the Canon T5 with the stock zoom lens. And Zoom D was the Canon C100 with the L series zoom lens. As for the prime lenses, Prime A was the Canon C100 with the Canon 50mm f1.8. Prime B was the Canon T5 with the 35mm Rokinon Cine lens. Prime C is the T5 with the Canon 50mm. And then Prime D is the Canon C100 with the Rokinon Cine lens. Now let's hear the results from our panel. In comparison to B and D, A and C don't, does not have the, uh, the same contrast. And it also just doesn't have the same uh, doesn't have as good range when it comes to lighting, so you're getting much better deal with uh, B and D. Well, zoom B and D, I, I'm just thrown off by the exposure value of zoom B, but in terms of the clarity and focus, it's all there in terms of the detail of the subject's skin tone, um, the detail of the subject's skin, the hair, um, if it was just a touch brighter, you could definitely see uh, similarities between zoom B and D. Uh, the stuff. So it's the... Yeah, 18 to 50? 18 to 50. Wow. Um, it's not bad. It, it's a combination of sensor first, then lens second. I feel like shooting on cameras, shooting on Canons for so many years, I know the difference between obviously a full frame in terms of the aspect ratio, but also the resolution based on the type of lenses that you're using. Um, I've never really used a lot of stock lenses to see the, the, the variances in quality, but seeing how you're going from a basic stock lens to a higher end sensor signif doesn't significantly improves it, but it sort of defeats the misconception of what lower end stock lenses can do uh, in terms of their, their quality and, and range and, and usability. Um, it's really based on the sensor first, then the type of lens, and also lighting conditions. Um, it just, it ranges. It's all about experimentation and using the best light possible, or even using ambient light if, if, if possible as well. So, um, and also have, having a really good eye. Um, it's very distinct between all the shots. D, B, A, and C are pretty much the order. But um, it's just a matter of um, your ability to determine critical focus, color, and also contrast. I'm not surprised. I guess that L series lens from anything, those are, whew. Um, that quality is really nice, very sharp. Zoom B, you said it was the stock zoom. Um, I mean, obviously not as nice as the L series, but the quality is good. The lighting is a little, it's a little dark, but um, the image itself is actually really nice. But then the other two, it's just, you can, you can tell. It's not a C100, you know? Um, they're not as sharp. The color in A is, is actually pretty nice. Kind of hot on his face though. But um, uh, Zoom C is just, eh, whatever. But yeah, you can definitely um, tell the difference in the images. Or it's like uh, you see, like you have a you have a lot of detail on his tie, and uh, that's kind of what I was going with too. And uh, you have some ALSing on uh, on C, so I knew that one wasn't the uh, the C100. On uh, on B, it was really hard to tell, uh, but uh, I kind of noticed that like uh, the tie looks a lot softer. But I wasn't sure if that was just the focus because uh, 
bead just kind of looks very soft. And uh, I believe that was probably because uh, the Rokinons are a little bit soft when they're full open. But uh, I mostly went with the ties. But, uh, and, and uh, the beard too. You know, I was, uh, at first I wasn't sure if the, uh, if uh, the first one was uh, a C100 or a T5 with the nice lens. It kind of threw me off because I wasn't expecting the first image to look completely, completely nice. You know, I was, I was not sure exactly what was going to happen there. D is definitely the most, um, the sharpest out of all of them. Um, I feel like B and C are very soft in terms of uh, the image quality, not just focus, but there's not a lot of detail on the skin. Um, not a lot of detail in the blacks as well. Even the highlights on B and C are completely just blown out while A and D retain some of the highlights. Um, you can see the detail in the subject's pores and even the, the detail on the subject's hair on A and D. But on B and C, you could see that it blurs out a little bit. Um, in terms of the reds as well, you could see the red pop out a lot more on A and D. You could even see the details of the actual ties, the tie that the subject's wearing on A and D, but on B and C, you could see it kind of blur out a little bit. And also the, the, the reds aren't completely true to uh, what A and D actually show versus B and C. Um, you could even see the subjects like, color of the subject's eyes a lot more in detail on A and D versus B and C. Prime A and Prime D are very similar. It's just, it's shocking. It's shocking how how much detail. I mean, the, I think the highlights are the only difference if you pair them side by side A and D, uh, because I'm not sure if you stop down on it or not, but if it's the same settings, just a touch hot on, on the top right of the subject's temple but there's still enough detail in there. Um, but in terms of clarity, focus, it's pretty shocking that Prime A is like that sharp. Um, I still think Prime A looks the best. Prime D is extremely sharp. Like you can see every single one of his pores, um, but it kind of almost makes him look a little bit grainy. So definitely still Prime A. I could definitely tell that Prime B and Prime C were definitely not the C100 just by um, the quality, again, like you said before about sensors, like you can you can definitely, like whether it's the sensor or the lens, um, I mean, you use the same lenses, right? Yeah. On different cameras and you can definitely tell, I, like it's not a matter of the lens, it's a matter of the body in those cases. Um, I mean, I use, I use 50 for everything. So that's always like my go-to lens. I think it's safe to say when you're trying to capture the best image, the camera is the most important. However, that doesn't mean you should forget about the lens. Now, if you're wondering my opinion, it virtually matches the panel. For the zoom, I think D looks the best, followed by B, A, and C. And as far as the primes, I think D is the best, followed very close by A, C, and B. So there it is. While the lens isn't the most important part to capturing the best image possible, it is definitely something that should not be neglected in your gear arsenal. And well, guys, that's it. I would like to thank my panel creators consisting of Professor Karen Seha, Nick Turco, and Taylor Dillon. And I'd also like to thank all of you guys for watching the entire pilot episode of Broke Film School. If you like this video, make sure you thumbs up down below. And I want to hear from you. So make sure you comment or tweet at MyC Productions with the hashtag Broke Film School. I'll see you next time.